So good morning, everyone. My name is Ray Baker, and I work for Nitronics. And I'm going to talk today about our hand on silicon products and uh, some new things that we've got going. Hit on a little application and uh, basically introduce you to the company. So this, this is our agenda for today. And people may not realize we've actually been around for quite a while. We're one of the first GAN companies to appear on the market. We were founded in 1999. We've got about 750,000 devices out in the market today. So we've got a lot of history, a lot of heritage, and we've seen very, very good reliability from those products that are out there. We have a mimic capability, which sets us a little bit apart from some of the other uh, folks that we want against in the beer market. And, in, and our unusual advantage is that we're based on a silicon wafer. So while everyone else in the game market is pretty much based on silicon carbide, we're a unique offering. Being based on silicon wafers gives us a lot of cost advantages, gives us advantages and things that we can do with that process versus silicon carbide. It's a different material. It allows us to do things like thinning, through ideas, and some other things that are really nice, especially when you look at them. And then a big push that we've had in the last year, we were one of the first folks to come out with GAN in plastic packages, and we have really, really ramped that up this year. I think we're going to see some new packages, and uh, I'm going to introduce you to the true highest power GAN in plastic packages. So about a year ago, we were purchased by Gallium Arsenide for Gas Labs, and that was almost like being rewarded. Uh, Gas Lab brings a lot of uh, muscle to our team. We've got a new management team and, uh, and some, some leverage within the industry that's really helped us again on the packaging in particular. In this year, 2013, our focus has been on 48 volts. And you'll notice if you come to our booth or if you look at some of the recent press releases that we've done, we're rolling out a whole family of 48 volt hand devices. If you look forward towards the second half of this year, we're uh, rolling out a 0.25 process. So this would bring us pretty much up to parity with the best guys in the industry. So you combine those two 48 volts as well as 0.25, and you can sort of imagine that now you can look at high power devices up in the X and KU range. So that's what, that's what we're looking forward to for the next year. So most of you may be familiar with this if you've worked with gallium nitride before. The main advantage is the higher bandwidth. It's a hemp process, high mobility process. So you sort of take all the things that you like about gallium arsenide and add high frequency to it. So you can do much higher power and still maintain low capacitance, high bandwidth, and so forth. And in terms of ruggedness, again, the high band gap gives you the ability to operate off high voltages, higher breakdown voltages. We're now seeing greater than 200 volts in our, in our 50 volt process. And we're also seeing, because of improvements we've made over the last couple of years, that our MTTF and our junction temperature for a million hours has gone up substantially. We've actually got a, a device now that, that has, we've extended the claw, we ran it for a thousand hours, it didn't get any failures. So we're continuing to process those parts through, we're now up to 1,500 hours. So these numbers we, we're very confident in, we're seeing very, very good results in the raw testing. So why nitronics and why gain on silicon? Well, we're a mature process. We have been in volume production for over five years now. And again, remember that 750,000 devices shipped. That's a real number. And we've got tough customers. We, we're uh, one of our largest customers, a military radio customer. We've been in volume shipments for that for probably close to five years now. So we've got a very good field track record. We're the only folks who hold the packs for gain on silicon. So that's the reason why you see everyone else in the industry using silicon carbide. Perfectly fine material, it has certain advantages. We have a lot of advantages in silicon, and that's why we're the only folks that are doing this. Optimized thermals, you know, we hear a lot of folks say, well, silicon's not quite as good as silicon carbide thermal. And yes, if you strictly look at the properties of the material, that's true. Silicon carbide is a little bit better. But if you take things, there's a lot more to thermal, the thermal conductivity or the thermal resistance of the part. There's the thickness of the substrate. There's the way you lay out the transistors. 
Um, there's all kinds of things having to do with die attach, how you construct the packages themselves. So by the time you boil all of that up, you'll find that our parts are absolutely on par with the very best of our money prices. So you can look at our, our data sheets, and, and if you look 50 watt to 50 watt, or 100 watt to 100 watt, you'll see our numbers are as good as any of us. Lower cost substrate, well, this translates right to the bottom line. So the lower cost silicon substrates means that our cost per wafer, our cost per dye, is much, much lower than silicon dye. And it's also easier to process, so all of the backing, the sign, and so forth, is also less expensive. And unlike silicon carbide, we can go out and use the standard tools that are out there in the industry today, 6 a and 8 uh, So as we grow and as volumes grow and we merit it, we can actually go and scale up to, uh, to much larger acres. So again, what does that mean for price cost? And, you know, and our goal over the next, say, two, three years is to be roughly on par with LB loss on cost for a lot of basis. So I don't, I don't know anyone else to say that in the gallon of wine industry. So that's our goal, and uh, we think we've got a path to actually get there. And then finally, if you want to do mimics, we have the ability to do uh, conductors, capacitors, resistors, all of the other components that you need. And this is again where the silicon wafer gives you a benefit, because one of the problems with the high cost substrate is it's too expensive to put that inductor on the chip. It's too expensive to put that resistor on the chip. With the silicon wafer, you can afford to use real estate. So you can actually conceive of doing mimics at various frequencies where you actually put all of the matching on this on the same body. So we have several uh, mimics uh, products, and we're introducing two new ones this uh, year at the show. So um, you'll find good examples of that. And finally, you take all of the things that I just mentioned, and you add plastic packaging to that you end up with something that gives you both high performance and low cost. So the plastic packaging is really the icing on the cake that completes a high performance, low cost option. Technology baseline, this is basically where we are today. The NRF1 pro, uh, process in 28 volts, that's what we're shipping today. We've added and just qualified the 48 volt process. That's up there in the top left hand corner. And then the second half of this year, we're going to work on this quarter micron 28 volt process, which we're actually thinking we might be able to extend the voltage on that up to, uh, up to perhaps 40 and 48 volts even. So that's a little bit fuzzy, but it will allow us to do products that, that take you well up into X band and even locate you there. If you look out, say, two, three years, we anticipate getting down to 0.15 nodes. We are outsourced manufacturing, so we, our wafer processing is done at, uh, at companies that will allow us to make these transitions pretty nicely and without having a huge investment and huge lead time and so forth. So we think we're going to be able to march down these technology paths pretty, pretty quickly now. Packaging strategy, very simply, we, we offer the same ceramic packages that everyone else offers. Two or three companies that sell these, and we use the same ones as, as the rest of the industry, both LD Moss as well as M. I think what sets us apart is this plastic pack drop. And again, we've been doing this for years. We have SO products out today, little SO packages. We've just added QFN packages. We also are introducing at this show a DFN package, which is kind of a, a rectangular version of the QFN, which is especially nice because. I don't know if you've seen gallium nitride power dye, but they tend to be very thin, very long rectangular strips. It's really well suited for these DF packages because the aspect ratio and the, the way you spread the heat is pretty nice. And we've also optimized our dye attach, so we actually have plastic products that will operate CW with margin. So that's pretty remarkable. That's something that's also unique that we offer. You're not just offering pulse or linear operation. Most of our plastic packages will support CW. So these are the packages we have today. Again, the ceramics as well as the plastics. And one of the nice things about these QFN and EFN products, as you can see, these things go up well in the millimeter range. There's, there's companies out there offering plastic versions. Uh, 
plastic devices that cover the 30 and 40 gigabits. So this really puts us on a good roadmap for the next quarter micron and even 0.1 micron processes. If you look at sort of across power, um, this plastic pack, TO272, it will in fact cover up to 100 to 200 watts. So you see almost the same envelope in plastic in terms of power dissipation that you see in the ceramic devices. And in fact, um, with a 100 watt device, we're seeing about the same thermals in plastic as ceramic. New selector guide, if, if uh, anyone wants those, I'll have these after. So we're introduced to the guide to show. And if you compare this to anyone that's seen our old selector guide, there's more than twice as many products this year as we've had in the past. So we're introducing both dye products as well as 48 volts as well as mimic. So greatly expanded portfolio. So let's take a look at some of the new stuff. This product on the left is probably our most popular device. And, and that might strike you as strange because it's not a high power part. It's a five watt part. But because it's in plastic, and then it fits a lot of, sort of driver applications, linear applications around a half watt to one watt. And it's very nicely priced. Um, our competition offers something similar at something like 5x the price. So this is a very, very nice cost effective gain transistor. Useful in a lot of applications. We're taking that already good part, we've improved the thermals, we've improved the package, offering it at the same price with less. And as you see here, about 40% better thermal performance. So again, that's a combination of all kinds of things. The package design, die attached, the layout of the transistor. And this product here, this new A, a device, is actually footprint and performance compatible. So for most customers, it would be a drop in, an actually drop in improvement. We're also introducing a uh, version of this in QFN. And we've added a little secret sauce inside the package, a little bit of pre match that allows it to work over the full 4.9 to 5.1 game. So it delivers five watts across that entire bandwidth, single matching. It's not narrow band. And uh, we're finding applications for that in things like 802.11 DC. Um, and, and certainly there's going to be other applications in 3 gigabits for that. We've taken a good part and we've added a couple of improved versions. This is our new 50 watt 28 volt device. It's in a ceramic package. And how does this contrast to the device that replaced? Thermals are incredibly improved. Uh, the device that this replaced was something in the order of 3 point something C per watt. This product, as you see, is about 2 C per watt, which at the 50 watt level is as good as anything on the market today. This is one of our new Mimic products. It is actually 50 ohms in, 50 ohms out, so it's a true match amplifier. Uh, when I talk to customers, I often describe this as a game block with So it delivers about 5 to 7 watts from DC to 1.5 gigahertz. And again, 50 ohms in, 50 ohms out. You can't find an easier amplifier than for VHF, UHF, or low L-band applications. Simply coupling caps and bias components in the way you go. Uh, another curious thing about this amplifier, if you look at the data sheet, you're going to find that the noise figure is actually quite good. The noise figure of this amplifier is about one and a half dB, which is surprisingly good for not only for GAN device, but also for mimic. So you have good noise figure. We have customers using this for an LNA because it's very rugged. You've got a co-channel, a co-site problem where you've got a real camera coming at you with uh, high power pulses and so forth. This part will survive. So you'll see some applications where you can actually remove the limiter and replace it with either street cut or just mini. This is another new device. Basically looks like the part I just showed you, except for it covers through 2.7 gigahertz. So the full band from near DC is about 20 megahertz, all the way to 2.7 gigahertz with one device. It delivers about five watts across the entire band with reasonable efficiency and good memory. Very nice product band device. So you can sort of imagine that if you need to cover, for example, 800 to 1,000, 1.8 to 2.2, you need to do all of that. It's one device, five watts in the entire band. This is another new device, another new mimic. 
this part puts out about 12 to 15 watts and covers near DC near Edward. So uh, we built this part to support handheld military radios, things that are uh, in that sort of 10 watt to 15 watt range. And again, it covers the entire band. Uh, there's a little bit of matching on the output. The input is matched. Uh, but it's easy to make this broadband over basically that entire range. Turns on 28 volts. So here's the big thing that we're announcing at the show, and that's the introduction of our 48 volt line. So you'll see, rather than having just uh, one or two parts, we're actually introducing an entire family. You're likely to see this list grow over the next six months to a year as well. We have 12 to 100 watt devices, that's the 3D instruments. So we've got a 12, 25, 50, and 100. And as you can see, these parts on the left, all plastic packs. So the lower power devices are in this DFM, and the 50 and 100 watt are in the TO27 plastic. And of course the, the standard ceramic packages are also available at the 50 and 100 watt level. So this is our new 48 volt product family, and uh, very, very fun. Show you a couple of what those uh, look like. Here's an example of the 12, uh, 12 watt 48 volt. And again, you can see the DFM plastic package. And again, if you've seen the die, the die would actually occupy a fair amount of that, that um, floor in the, in the package because the die is roughly shaped about like this package. So it really works nicely to spread the heat over the entire flange on the bottom. So you'll find the thermals on this are really, really good. I think they're around 6 C per watt, something like that. Oh, there it is, 7 C per watt. So a very nice device. We see this being used as output stages, drivers, auto cut, and even some small cell applications where you have access to cool units. Here's an example of a very, very high power transistor. This is the real highest power gamma plastic transistor. This part will do CW at the 100 watt level. And it's good through about 2 gigahertz. Um, we developed this part for a Landmold customer. Which, uh, we've got a reference design where this, uh, and I'll show you in a moment, uh, covers roughly 100 megahertz to 100 gigahertz, so 1 gigahertz, with about 80 watts of power. And as you can see, I mentioned that this package thermally is very good. And again, it's not just the package, it's the die, it's the die attached, all those things together. 1.7 C per watt and 100 watt 48 volt is as good as anything on the market today. And in fact, as I mentioned before, this is every bit as good as the ceramic package equivalent using the same so We've done a lot of good work on this plastic package. Really super proud of it. Here's the exact same die in the ceramic package. And again, as I mentioned, 1.7 C per watt. That's the same number. So there's no penalty. For, you know, for the choice of plastic versus ceramic, it doesn't matter what the customer and the requirements are. But thermally, there's no advantage to use the plastic, and the cost will be substantially less. As you can well imagine, that plastic package is, is probably a fraction of the cost of the ceramic. So let's talk about one example of what what this 48 volt thing does for you. So what good does it bring? So here's an example of what a landmobile radio might look like. As you if you look back over the history of land mobile, it's been about more frequencies, more bandwidth, more data, and so forth. It's pretty much followed. As you can see, in the old days, we had VHF. Then they added VHF some years, probably back in the 70s and 80s. And today, they're adding 700, 800, 900 megahertz. Now, unfortunately, to be interoperable with some of these older networks and older systems, you have to offer all of these in one box. You have to cover all of those bands in one radio. So the old solution is you throw three different LDMOS chains at this, because LDMOS can all the entire bandwidth. So you throw three LDMOS chains, and then you have some kind of multi-coupler or, or filter or something out that, uh, that you combine those into one antenna, maybe a switch makes this. Well, instead, it's all the way. You can do this with a single gallium nitride chain and cover that entire band from roughly 130 to 900. So let's see how we do that. So this is what the lineup would look like. Somewhere back in the radio, you start with about 0 dBm. We go through a driver stage. 
in the final stage, and that brings us up to about 80 watts. And again, this is all plastic, all 48 volts. So if we throw the part on a low pull fixture, just looking at the output stage, we find that the optimum impedance is somewhere around 12 ohms. And you go, huh. First of all, that's really high. Why is that impedance high? Because the voltage is high, right? It just follows naturally. And you go 12 ohms, 12 ohms. Hey, that's like 50 ohms divided by 4. So you can actually match this over a very broad bandwidth with a simple 4 to 1 transform. So here's what our reference design looks like. We've paired the input and output. It turns out that that's about the right number on the input as well. So we've got four to one transformers on the input. Now, and that's about it. There's a little bit of magic here on the output to trim it or the higher bands to 700, 800, 900. But most of the heavy lifting is being done in these transformers, and they're really close to our We developed these with the Ameren folks, and uh, they did a really nice job. That's a full uh, surface mount solution. So the these uh, transformers who are surface mount capable, pick and close, so uh, do. And then pretty much everything else is standard uh, components. Yeah. Here's what the performance looks like, and one thing that's kind of surprising is how good the input and output return loss is. Really, really excellent. They're better than two to one, pretty much over the entire bandwidth small signal. So not only does it produce good power, but it also has good visvoir. So if you back it off and you've got low pass filters and so forth, um, it's really well behaved. Here's the big performance. So this shows you what the drain efficiency, the gain, the output power look like. And as you can see, the output power is unbelievably flat. This thing delivers roughly 80 to 90 watts over the entire you know, 100 to 1 gig drain. Drain efficiency is a little better at the bottom, as you might expect. Um, but still get over the band in the small signal gain. You actually pull a little bit of an uptilt there to, uh, to get you a little more gain at the top of it. So these are the contacts for the company. That's me at the bottom. I'm the apps engineer. Greg Baker is our CEO, and he's also uh, filling in as uh, key of sales. And that's our inside person for our company. So you're welcome to contact any of us. I've got cards, so by all means come up and introduce yourself. And uh, if you'd like to new selector guide, I've got some of those as well. So, if I have any questions, you're going to